Hello, I'm Mike Scott, old low-light volunteer and archivist at Christ Church North Shields. My short talk today is mainly about the church building. The ancient records, registers, treasures and people can be looked at in the future. Christ Church has stood in North Shields for more than 350 years. It has changed beyond recognition over that time in response to changes in forms of worship and church attendances. Why the parish church of Tynemouth was built at North Shields and how it has changed over the years is an interesting story. The first parish church of Tynemouth was the western half of the monastery church of Tynemouth Priory. Following the closure of the monastery by Henry VIII, the eastern half of the church was stripped of anything valuable, including stone, wood and lead, leaving the parish church standing alone. Having a parish church inside a castle was a great inconvenience to all parties. The military objected to worshippers and visitors wandering around the site, and the church congregation objected to the noise and misuse of their building. Things came to a head during the Civil War in the 1640s, when the congregation couldn't gain access to the church for months and had to rent a space in Ralph Gardner's brewery at Churton for services. Burials had to take place in what is now called Northumberland Park. In 1652, Oliver Cromwell's commissioners recommended that a parish church be built at North Shields, centrally placed between the villages of Tynemouth, Preston, Churton, Whitley and Merton. The Earl of Northumberland gave land at Brock's Close, but, because of straitened times, it took another 16 years before the church was completed. There were great celebrations when the building was consecrated on the 5th of July 1668 by the Lord Bishop of Durham, John Cosin. Cosin, friend of Charles II, had recently been made bishop on his return from exile in France during the Civil War. The building was a simple structure in the style of a Presbyterian meeting house and had four arms of equal length. The inside was furnished with box pews and the pulpit stood at the centre. This is a 1696 plan showing the names of the pew occupants including Sir Ralph Delaval and the Duke of Somerset. The Duke of Somerset married Elizabeth Percy daughter of the Earl of Northumberland and richest heiress in the country. She was only 15 and had already been married twice. From the beginning the building was found to be too small, so galleries were erected in each of the four arms. It became evident that this was not enough, so the church wardens embarked on a series of enlargements by building over the spaces between the arms. In 1753, the northwest corner was built over. In 1764, the southeast corner. And in 1785, the southwest corner. By this time, North Shields was a thriving Georgian port. The town had spread onto the bank top, and the population was increasing and affluent. It was decided that the church needed a tower with bells to summon the congregation to worship from all corners of the large parish. Between 1786 and 1788, a tower with six bells was added. In 1792, the whole building was remodelled with the walls being raised ten and a half feet with new windows and a roof. Inside, two huge galleries were erected over the north and south aisles. The building could hold over a thousand worshippers, allowing each person 18 inches. In the mid-1800s, the Church of England underwent a change in forms of worship, with more emphasis being placed on music and ritual. To accommodate choir pews and an organ, a new large chancel was built in 1869. Following World War II, the interior of the church was remodelled the large galleries were taken down, the organ and choir pews were removed from the chancel and returned to the west gallery. The bomb-damaged 
windows were replaced with clear glass, giving the place a light, airy feeling. Three replacement east windows, made by Dr. Leonard Evitz, were installed in the chancel. The vacant organ chamber was turned into the Seaman's Chapel of St. Nicholas. The latest changes to the building were made in 1984, with the addition of the parish centre. Many designs were submitted, with the successful one being constructed mainly in slate and recycled stone from a Yorkshire woollen mill. From Charles II to Elizabeth II, what events the building has witnessed, if only walls could talk. <laughs>